All right. Well, welcome everybody. I think we'll get started and expect a couple people to, to find their way in as we go. Uh, so first, thank you all for joining us again. My name is Lauren Cassidy. I work with SIN7, um, and I'm going to be kind of your MC for the day. Uh, I'm excited to introduce you to our speakers today, our signature experts um, for our topic today, which is exceeding customers' holiday expectations and your 2023 goals. Um, so today we've got James Bowe. He's the owner of Easy Insight. We have Chris Iyer, uh, the VP of Strategic Partners and Industry Relations at Octane, uh, specifically ShipStation. And then we have Izzy Coyle, who is Sin7's U.S. Solutions Engineer. Uh, these are three of your industry experts. They're going to be great to answer any questions, too. While we're going through today, please don't hesitate. As I mentioned, our Q&A function is enabled. Um, you are more than welcome to ask any questions. If for some reason we don't get to your question today, we'll follow up with you separately, um, but you can anticipate some follow-up with us regardless. Let's talk through our agenda. So today we're gonna talk about end of year stock take. We're gonna talk returns management, pricing and discounting, shipping and reporting and connected inventory performance. And then we'll answer some of your questions. So if all of you are ready and we're set to go, Krish, Izzy, James, I think all of you've been prepared. So we'll hop right in. Um, so let's start with end of year stock take. And Izzy, I think this is gonna really start with you. Can you talk to us about how can retailers manage their end of year stock take process to ensure that they have the right products in stock to meet holiday demand. I'll throw all of these at you and let you kind of take it the next slide. Uh, if you can talk about what role technology plays like an IMS or an inventory management system um, and the year end stock take process. And then what is the best reporting method or practice to ensure you're ready for end of year? For sure. And thank you for the introductions, Lauren. Thank you, everyone, for joining the webinar today. James and Krish, great to have you as well. Um, we'll go ahead and get started talking about end of year stock take process. So um, to start out, stock counters should know what areas and products they're checking um, and do so at the quietest part of the day. That was our first point there. Uh, this will ensure minimal disruption to usual operations. Uh, resource planning might be required to make sure you have enough staff to do a full count in a timely manner. Um, while stock take is in process, SIN7 does disable all of other stock movements, so it's best to do this when other operations like sales fulfillment is able to be paused. Uh, full stock take does take longer than typical cycle counting, so proper time planning is key. Second note there, uh, record any variances, if possible, send to your accounting system. So once stock's uploaded to SIN7, the variance is automatically calculated for you. From there, it can be sent to the appropriate account in QBO or zero. Management can then also review the stock take to see where variances are for what products. This should give them some insight into what goods are possibly being mismanaged. Third point there, reporting will give clarity into stock counts and valuation, which can be compared before and after stock take to understand how values have changed. So SIN7 in your accounting system should have the same inventory valuation, so it's helpful to run your valuation reports in each platform to make sure they match. There are a few reports that we'll talk about in the coming slides that are useful during stock take as well as after to determine the best stock levels needed for the coming months. Of course, benefits to year-end stock take include more accurate inventory assessments, COGS accuracy, uh, tax compliance, fewer picking errors, which of course speaks to the theme of today, uh, exceeding customer expectations, and then of course, a more efficient operation overall for your business. Cycle counting in the beginning of the new year should be easier after an overall count as well. Um, on another note, maybe your team doesn't have time or resources for a full inventory count at once. You could consider cycle counting or counting only portions of the products near the end of the year. If you can plan a few successful cycle counts, you'll be closer to inventory accuracy than if you didn't do one at all. It's helpful to prioritize those high demand products you expect to move fast and then do other items based on sale frequency. Cycle counts throughout the year also ensure more consistent inventory valuation accuracy, take some of the pressure off of doing an entire end of the year count. Uh, we can go ahead to the next slide. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks, Izzy. 
So we're going to talk about returns management now. I think I speak for a lot of business owners when I talk about the chaos that can come from returns management and making sure that it's keeping you in a good place and that you're on top of the whole game associated with it. Um, again, there are a few questions here, so I'm going to ask them all and then we'll dive in further. Um, so if uh, you all can speak to businesses and, and how they can find a balance between providing a seamless return process, but also managing the potential impact that that might have on their bottom line. Uh, if you can talk about the strategies retailers implement to enhance the efficiency and customer friendliness for their return process, because as we know, uh, a, a good return process might make for a return customer. And then what reports can you track for these? Uh, how can we find the patterns and the problems? Um, I think, Krish, that you were going to take the wheel on this one, if you want to start us off. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so... I think uh, just like any other constant in life, like death and taxes, if you're a retailer, uh, returns are going to be um, something that you have to deal with. So, it, you know, it is something that's going to be part of life. Um, that said, I, I, I always have a phrase here. How do you uh, dismantle an atomic bomb? And that's uh, don't build one to begin with is, is the answer. And while you can't prevent returns entirely, um, you can really cut down on them by being proactive. What do I mean by that? Meaning things like better lighting, better product photos, better descriptions, better size charts, um, and 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 uh, really engaging with your customers and finding the root cause when they do make a return um, can really go a long way in reducing that return rate to begin with. So a lot of those methods may not be sexy, they're proactive, um, but they really go a long way and, and really don't cost you very much when it comes to reducing your returns. Um, but if you must, uh, which I believe that you will. And uh, certainly uh, there's a lot of data out there to say that retailers who have cle clear returns policies uh, certainly do better ones that have um, uh, easy to understand policies and uh, as well as, as even free returns certainly do better in the marketplace. Um, certainly making that uh, easy to understand, like I said, uh, prominent on your website uh, and easy to decipher, not just for your standpoint as a D2C retailer, um, but also when you do that across different channels, such as marketplaces are concerned. So what I would say is, let's be proactive and try to reduce them from the start. Don't build that, but uh, don't build that bomb to begin with. Um, but when you do have to offer returns, making that clear and easy to understand and having those policies in place will really go a long way. I really like that. It's a little it's a little intense, but I'm here for it. Let's prevent the bomb from the beginning. Fully on board with that, Krish. Um, and I think you really highlight a lot of things that maybe are sometimes overlooked, right? You know, we don't think about the, the clarity of the image even is something that might seem so to some so insignificant, but can really make or break the experience for the buyer. Um, I think that's so important to highlight. And, uh, you know, if you don't, what's the saying? If you don't, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And I think that's kind of what you're encompassing there. Uh, James, can you speak a little bit to the returns, running return reports and what they should look for there? Yes, so using the reports in your inventory system or you know more sophisticated reports you might have in your business intelligence product, you want to do reports looking at returns by different common factors, looking at them by source channel. Are you getting a lot of returns on your Shopify? Are you getting a lot of returns on Amazon? Trying to find the patterns there that can help guide that root cause analysis. Same thing with looking at product category, customer type, and then looking at, tre at the trends uh, of how those returns have changed month over month, year over year, figuring out if you're getting better or worse. Uh, make sure to set clear benchmarks so you know if you are improving towards a goal, and that way you can keep your business focused on re reducing that return rate. Awesome. And we are going to go a little more into reporting. As we mentioned earlier, uh, we'll go into report insights in a bit. So, and I know that there are frequently questions associated with reporting. So I think 
conveniently, we have, again, an expert on the call. But uh, if you have questions regarding that, don't hesitate to ask those. Um, you know, there's a lot of moving pieces to returns in general, and then you add the whole holiday experience on top of it. Uh, there's a lot, a lot to manage. And so the hope is that by planning and thinking ahead, you've managed the bulk of it ahead of the chaotic time. We'll go ahead to pricing and discounting. Um, I think this is a really great topic and maybe something that impacts a lot of businesses. Um, you want to engage customers with pricing, right? And, and competitive pricing and discounting, um, but you don't want it to impact your bottom line. So having said that, uh, my question for our three experts is, what are the factors that businesses should be focusing on to ensure holiday discounts don't negatively impact their bottom line? Uh, I think this was a little bit James and a little bit Chris. Are you comfortable speaking to it? Definitely. Great. So on the reporting side, when it comes to discounts, you want to make sure you're pulling over all the costs associated to those products. So you're figuring out what you're actually getting as profit. That way you don't discount yourself into something negative. So what are the what's it costing you to sell on Amazon? What are you paying in terms of FBA fulfillment fees? What are what is it costing you to ship the product? So are you giving away free shipping? Okay, how is that affecting your bottom line then? Same thing with any other costs. You know, what are you, you know, what are you spending as far as advertising? What are your warehouse expenses? You need to be able to take those expenses, pull them back, and map them to your products so you can identify what the true profit is and use that to guide what you can discount something at. You know, is it okay? I can discount this at $15 or is that suddenly going to push me over the edge and maybe I can't sell on Amazon at a profit if I do that? And you just use, use factors like that to help guide your decision making when it comes to those discounts. You'll also want to make sure you have reports set up for validation across your e-commerce channels and your inventory to say, okay, are my prices in sync across these channels? Especially as you're, as you're updating discounts, make sure you don't leave something behind and suddenly you take a hit because you didn't update the pricing on one of your six e-commerce channels. Chris, anything to add there, Izzy? Yeah, absolutely. A uh, couple couple things. Uh, certainly, uh, James had uh, uh, a couple points on shipping, which were music to my ears, of course. Um, but what I would say here is we got to look at discounting as a lever. Uh, it goes back to the Stephen Covey, uh, you know, habits of highly effective people, you know, begin with your end goal in mind by discounting. What is the behavior you're trying to get? Is it to get more units per transaction? Is it to get more inventory turns of a particular product? Is it to try to get new customers? So it really depends on what is the goal you're trying to affect. Um, and understand that, again, being a lever, lever uh, that it, it is but one tool in your arsenal uh, to try to get the customer. So, for example, free shipping. Studies have shown that you are more likely to actually pay more if even if a, a product ha has free shipping than if you had to pay out of pocket. So something that's $43, but $5.99 shipping uh, coming to less than $50, you're more likely to buy the item that's $50, but with free shipping uh, because of perception and trade-offs and, and what you're getting for your money. So really understanding that it's a lever uh, and that free shipping is, is something that you're going to have to look at. So discounting does need to factor in the cost of free shipping, but going to whatever the goals are that you're trying to affect, I think it really has to factor into why you're actually engaging in discounting. And one of the points on the slide here is where are you selling? Understand that uh, by channel, you may or may not have a little more flexibility when it comes to the price of the product and discounting. So for example, if you're selling on Amazon, very price conscious versus maybe what you might have on either another channel or your own D2C website. So factoring in the channel when it comes to discounting does make a difference. 
think you've highlighted some really important factors here, both of you, you know, and, and we've kind of already said it, there's so much to be conscious of and, and considerate of, um, as, especially as it applies to pricing and discounting. But I think a theme in this is knowing, knowing where you're selling overall, an important theme, but also knowing your customer and what's going to um, encourage them and motivate them to make the purchase, right? And I think you really hit the nail on the head in terms of understanding um, the free shipping versus is it a higher discount? What what does that motivation look like, Krish? I think that was a really great point um, and something we really need to be conscious of. So great across the board. Thanks, gentlemen. We're gonna dive in further into shipping. Um, so first two questions. How can businesses optimize their shipping processes to ensure timely deliveries and then minimize any related issues to shipping? And then what role um, does collaboration with shipping partners play? Uh, Krish, I'm gonna throw this at you, ShipStation, it's in the name, this is where you shine. I've always shined, but continue. Well, thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, what I would say here is that uh, to the idea of Collaboration. Collaboration isn't necessarily just with your FedEx, UPS, the Postal Service, or whatever carrier you're using, but it also relates to the technology vendors you're working with, like SIN7, and making best use of their tools, um, making use of the tools that your carrier has uh, that you may or may not know about. So talking to your rep and investigating the tools they may have on their website that maybe you aren't utilizing. Um, but it also goes to collaborating with your end consumer. You know, what do I mean by that? Um, we have here on the slide that delivery times and fulfillment times up front. When you receive an order, what is that cycle time between when you receive it and you're going to process it? And what does that look like during the holidays? Does that differ from normal? Being able to communicate that even in something like the product listing, super important. Can you communicate the amount of inventory you have on hand? Because that obviously will influence also shipping and sellouts uh, as to when somebody will, will place the item. Are you communicating with your shipping carrier on their cutoff dates um, and, and what's associated there? Um, one of the other things I have on here is understanding the why. Now, when you ship things out, you have consumers that buy them for different reasons. You have people obviously buying them for gift purposes, in which case the shipping lead time matters greatly. But you also have people like me that go online and bargain hunt, uh, think that during the holiday season, it's the best time. So do you even have maybe something like a radio button or, or ability to capture information from your consumer as to what they're buying it for? Uh, so, for example, if you're a bargain hunter, if it came in on December 26, is that the end of the world? No. But if it was for a present, it may be. So the idea is understanding the why and what the demand is around your product. And certainly tools like Sin7, inventory planning and knowing your consumer really go a long way in, in planning that appropriately. Last thing I'll say here is planning for unexpected volume. What do I mean by that? Typically, uh, your carrier contracts will have clauses in them that talk a little bit about the idea that if you have grossly unexpected volume that they can refuse pickup or refuse delivery or, 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 or handling. Um, so if you think during the holidays you're going to have a grossly higher demand, Typically do a couple hundred orders a day, but during the holiday, maybe a couple thousand. You got to communicate with your um, shipping provider and know that and be able to tell them about it uh, to forecast that demand so you don't end up in that problem. Along those lines, having backups as far as other carriers that you might be able to use or even knowing where is the closest retail drop off. If you have something that comes in after the delivery or the processing time, yeah, rather than going in the mail stream the next day, maybe being able to take those 20, 30 orders over to a retail location just to get them out there that day itself. Super important, especially if you're a, a mid-sized retailer. Um, but I think all these points here about technology vendors, communicating and knowing your consumer and communicating with your carrier themselves 
super important to know about and communicate upfront, even in things like the product listing. Yeah, that's great to identify there, Christian. I think, again, you're, you're really going into making sure that you're being as upfront with the customer and knowing your needs of your customer as much as possible. So um, yeah, this, this was really great. We're gonna go into reporting insights now. Um, we are getting close to um, coming to our question section. So if you have questions and you wanna start thinking of them, again, feel free to use the Q&A section. Um, so we'll go into this. Uh, two questions, uh, what reports should I be running as we enter this crucial end of year? And then what report metrics will make the greatest difference and how I plan for the year ahead? I'm gonna let Izzy and James kind of take the wheel on this one. For sure. Yeah, I can definitely at first uh, speak to some of the reports that SIN7 can provide to help with uh, some planning as well as the stock take process, as we mentioned before. Um, so within SIN7, uh, and this is for both the core and Omni products, um, we have sales credit note by product reporting. Uh, we mentioned with returns being able to see by channel or possibly by product customer uh, what products are being returned most. So that credit note reporting is going to help a lot to give you visibility as to what's being returned, what's coming back into your IMS. Sales profit summary uh, is great for both before and after holidays, sort of seeing like we talked about pricing and discounting, how that's affecting some of our profit margins, things like that. So that'll give us visibility into including cost. How are our products doing? Um, and then, of course, after the sale has been made, uh, some sales demand. So when we're planning for beginning of next year, uh, moving into the new year, uh, how can we forecast some of that demand? Both Omni and Core do have basic forecasting reports. Uh, we're really working off of averages and some historical data to give you an estimation of what would be needed. That helps you to do some purchasing as well. Um, if you find maybe our reports are too basic and you'd like some further, you know, really in-depth forecasting, we have a lot of great technology uh, part platforms that we work with, like Converse Sites, uh, Stock Trim, that can give you some further insight, uh, give you a little bit of a bigger tech stack so that you have uh, some more in-depth uh, forecasting and demand planning as well. Cool. Um, I'll hand it over to you, James. Those were the main uh, since seven reports I wanted to highlight. And then as you kind of need to go beyond that, uh, when you jump to something that's more of a business intelligence platform like Easy Insight, then it's, you know, we already kind of talked a little bit about pulling over those additional costs. So taking your profit beyond just subtracting the COGS and allocating across those Amazon fees, those shipping costs, automatically pulling that data over from the e-commerce system, um, from the ship, you know, from sh ship station, things like that. Um, you know, Izzy already touched a little bit on the forecasting side, but again, with your, you know, if you're using, a, you know, more forecasting uh, functionality, doing things like safety stock calculations, you know, based on what our lead times are, you know, based on, you know, uh, monthly max demand, calculating safety stocks, you avoid stockouts. Uh, ideally, your forecasting system can also do things like reduce the, the weight it gives to the sales you had during the holiday season. So identifying, making sure that you don't overstock as a result of what you tracked in during the holiday season for the next, you know, couple of quarters of sales. Um, if you have, for example, SIN 7s in multiple geographical regions. So you have one in the US, one in the European Union, one in Australia, and then have, a, say, a manufacturing one in China. You want to be able to use your business intelligence system to combine the data across all those geographical areas and accurately capture the sales, the profit, so on, across those different systems. Um, you'll also want to be able to do point in time inventory reports. So looking at you know what you you know what your inventory was at each point in time, you know month over month, as you do your end of year accounting. You can use that for just general accounting purposes, reconciling data with your accounting system, as well as calculating things like stock turnover and other inventory ratios. Awesome. Thank you, James. Thank you, Izzy. Uh, you know, we've talked a lot about reporting kind of intermittently throughout this entire uh, presentation, and, and it's a worthwhile topic in terms of, you know, if you don't have accurate reporting, 
you're, you're in a rough spot for the whole year. And there's so many factors that are involved in that, right? There's your, um, your stock take, like Izzy started, you know, knowing where, where you stand, um, knowing what costs are you're going to be accruing throughout the year, you know, how are you going to best set yourself up for success, knowing about the various pieces of your business? Uh, you know, no one said it was easy to run a business. I'm not telling anybody a secret here. I'm sure everyone on this call is very well aware. Um, there's so many moving parts. And so, you know, for us and, and for today, what we really want to get to you is that um, there is there's a lot that you can do, but it all requires a lot of forethought and planning. Something I really wanted to speak to is Sin 7's uh, initiative called Connected Inventory Performance. Um, Connected Inventory Performance is really intended to help you streamline um, your, your entire process because there is so much going on and is so much moving. Um, it really allows businesses to customize their inventory approach um, based on how and where they sell. It also eliminates a lot of the manual work associated with inventory management. Uh, it offers automation, insights, and seamless integrations uh, with over 700 applications. Obviously, uh, we work with Easy Insight and ShipStation, and we try and do as much as we can to incorporate opportunities to help you do really what you love, which is running your business without the headache that is associated with running a business. Um, you know, we offer um, features like advanced warehouse manage or warehouse management, POS, um, B2B portal and online stores uh, features, 3PL and EDI. So there is a lot that we can do. Um, but at the end of the day, the intention is to try and help you figure out exactly what you need and how you can make it seamless and easy and second nature. I'm gonna move into your questions. Um, where can I lo locate the forecasting? Izzy, it looks like you're taking care of that met or that question, is that right? Yeah, yep. So I was just going to type, uh, it'll be in the sales report section. Uh, if you're in Omni, it's going to be about in the middle. And if you don't see it in your account, you might need to contact support and they can get it downloaded for you. Uh, otherwise, if you're in core, it should be right at the bottom of that, that sales uh, reporting list. Great. And then um, our next question also relates to core. Um, I want to set or punishing stock level. Um, so Nicole, I see your question and I will take this offline and make sure that I get to you personally um, and make sure that you get an answer on this one. Uh, is there, if there's no other questions, I think my last question for our panelists today, um, and maybe I'll stop sharing and just bring it, bring it to the three of you. Um, you know, we went over a lot of information today, right? There's no, there's no sugarcoating that. There's a lot that happens. Um, in, in the holiday experience, but really throughout the year. And there's a lot to be conscious of. Specific to holiday, is there anything that maybe we didn't talk about or that you want to just emphasize that you think is the, the secret to winning the holidays that maybe we don't already know? I'm throwing this at you cold. So no one was prepared for this question. Um, I think we've already mentioned this quite a few times. Um, I think one of the biggest messages of today is planning ahead uh, is very valuable in all of the, uh, you know, the different topics that we talked about. Uh, so I think we can apply that to each of the areas and uh, really look forward, like Chris had mentioned, uh, make a plan um, to fail to do so is, yeah, not good. So uh, I think planning is is the biggest, uh, you know, main point for me here. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say uh, to that point, uh, just to riff on it just a little bit in, in re regards to planning, um, the holiday season we saw during the pandemic starts earlier and earlier. Uh, certainly if uh, uh, you're anything like uh, my household, uh, there were holiday purchases in August. No one else? Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> that was in my household. Um, but it does, uh, jokes aside, mean the return season is longer and longer. So uh, going back to returns for a second, um, plan that returns, um, that window for returns is going to have to be um, longer and more flexible uh, when it comes to holiday purchases. So, you know, we could see return windows, you know, really stretching into February or even March, uh, depending on uh, depending on uh, uh, what you want to do in terms of uh, uh, processing inventory, but know that you have to be flexible uh, when it comes to that. 
That's a really great point. Uh, you really hit the nail on the head. Maybe not August, but September, we had holiday purchases in this household. And so, uh, which feels so early, but, you know, early bird gets the worm, right? So no one played Christmas music in my house. So I'll be grateful for that. <laughs> Fair. Uh, James, anything else that you think is maybe something to keep back pocket or be conscious of? Oh, uh, not really. Just make, make sure you have accurate reports set up across all your systems and just keep on top of what's happening before it rears up and becomes a problem. Great. Well, thank you all three of you so much. Um, for everyone still on, we were going to be able to share contact information for James and for Chris and for Izzy. Um, I think, you know, shamelessly, I'm going to plug that all three of them are exceptional to work with. Um, and if you have questions about shipping, reporting, Obviously, I'm biased, so Sin 7 as a whole. Um, we are so happy to help you out and to have these conversations with you um, and, and help you find success as you enter or are currently in the thick of the year, right? So um, thank you all again for attending. If we don't have any other questions, um, we'll go ahead and wrap this up and, and give you some time back. But thank you all again, and we hope you have a great holiday season, and it's super fruitful. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Bye-bye.